Hey guys, what up, Viper here, and today we're gonna talk a lot about stats of Alluvials. Essentially, that you know which are the relevant ones, which modifier is super, super valuable when you decide do I capture this Alluvial, do I not capture it, do I buy it off the marketplace, or what price do I sell it on the marketplace? Things like that, just explaining stats and giving you a good understanding and overview on that that you can use for every Alluvial essentially. And then also a lot of like fuel related topics because there's relevant news, and I hope they find you in time with the video. Okay, let's start with talking a little bit about fuel right now. So everybody sees that the fuel prices, right, like per unit are trending down significantly. Why is that? Essentially, there's more cell pressure on the alluvium zero side. People are producing more fuel than uh, people just buy, right? Uh, so the demand is like roughly, it looks like with, if you check on chain, it's on roughly like a million dollar per month or something right now. That is not catching up with how much fuel all the lands in alluvium zero currently produce. So we've seen this is a screenshot from a thread out of the, uh, the discord right of the feedback ideas section i think that the title was make fuel tradable elc20 token as originally planned bear with me this is just like the last few messages of that uh, thread essentially in the feedback ideas section of the discord and i mean the message by kieran is the relevant one right we are in the process of reducing output as stated in iip39 iip39 pretty much has stated that Alluvium Labs can make balance changes to Alluvium Zero and the fuel output of the land plots. And right now they are just producing more than what is needed, which just, if this keeps going, it's just going to put the, the price of the in-game currency of Alluvium of fuel just trending to very, very low amounts, which would just reduce the prices for everything significantly, right? So there's bad, has to be adjusted and they're working on it now the timestamp here is today 9 46 a.m for me i'm recording this video on the 15th of august so this is 15th of august like in the morning i hope the video reaches you in time if you guys did not see this before because there's two things related to this right so one in general, first of all, especially if you wanted to do like all the airdrop missions with crafting suits and weapons, I definitely uh, am planning to do maybe not all, but most of them for sure. I think that looks like really worthwhile milestones to do. No financial advice, entertainment purpose only, obviously. But yeah, I'm looking to do those milestones now. I need a lot of Solon for that. And that my personal plan was like, okay, I'm just going to keep checking the Solon price. And once it doesn't go down anymore, that is when I think, okay, everybody else is kind of starting to buy the Solon because they want to do these crafting missions. And that is when I'm going to go and buy that Solon. That was my idea, essentially. And I've talked about that on um, Twitch streams and so on as well. Now, because this is a thing, reducing we are in the process of reducing output as stated in IIP39. I'm now thinking, okay, maybe I'm not going to wait for that moment. Maybe I should just consider slowly buying more fuel right now because if the output is reduced, then the fuel price probably is going to go higher again. Oh yeah, one super, super important thing that I almost forgot to mention on this topic. If you're a landholder and you're producing fuel and so on, right? Um, like I am, this is fundamentally a good thing for you because currently prices are just like trending down and down and down and sell orders aren't getting filled so this is going to make your sell orders get filled and you're probably just going to get more per unit of fuel so this doesn't necessarily mean you sell your fuel for less if this probably means that your fuel actually gets sold and if amount that you get for the less amount of fuel is probably going to be same or even more essentially right so oh, that's nice. not assume more, right? NFA and everything, right? It's probably going to be more than currently. Don't assume this is like, damn, I'm going to sell for less than I'm currently am. No, you're probably going to make similar or more than currently because a lot of people sell orders have a hard time getting filled. Everybody is just like lower, 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 right? So fundamentally, like a good thing that pretty much needs to be done, balance change, that is, it's just one of the things of the economy setup, right? You cannot just like go and let it rip. Need to look a little bit at the balance of the games as well. So if you guys are looking to buy uh, any kind of Solon or other fuel, right, uh, especially because moving forward, I won't be on the Illuvium Council anymore. So I'm currently considering if I should reduce the time that I spend in creating content and YouTube videos and so on. I really, really enjoy it, but it is not really paying a whole lot content creation wise at the moment and without council. Yeah. I'm rethinking my priorities on that a little bit. So if you guys want me to keep doing the content, you can just uh, go to the profile, right? You can click on referral code, you can add referral and you can type in Viper and I would greatly appreciate that. And that means probably that the content is just gonna stay there and keep coming.
Okay, another cool economy tip outside of the whole like fuel and milestones and so on topic is you guys see, for example, here, these are like my last two buys, essentially. Uh, I tend to just make offers on Illuvians that I feel like, well, somebody is really trying to sell this aggressively. They listed like a really low price. I tend to just like make some offers like 50 to 60, 66% or whatever of the price. And oftentimes people accept it. So I just got a, a ramp fire for like less than 50 bucks. I got the Titan all for the same price earlier today. So the offer feature, really, really cool. And you should certainly be using that when you're not in a rush to get something. And when it seems like somebody just really wants to sell something while there's not just an immediate buyer for it, right? Like probably they're just gonna be like, oh, I, I want to get rid of this. And they just accept the offer that you make and you are safe out on like probably significant amount of money on those, right? Now on the example of the Ramfire here, uh, let's, uh, let's look at stats and let's uh, elaborate a bit more on what stats mean, what these stat modifiers do and so on. So a lot of the videos in the past I've always been pointing out, if you wanna do the most efficient overworld run kind of ways, you wanna check a lot of encounters, you wanna check probably, especially in the tier four and five Illuviates, and you wanna see if there are some guys that have really high stat modifiers. Now, not every stat is super relevant for every single Illuvia. There's a good amount of knowledge in here just about the gameplay side of things, maybe about the PvP meta side or potential PvP meta sites, but there's also just a lot of really basic things that you can apply to most of the Illuviates, right? So one part, for example, in Ramfire here, first of all, read the description of the Omega ability of every Illuvia. And then most of those abilities at some point have a number and this like, uh, I don't know, star symbol and then times op like OP, right? Like 650 times OP means Omega power. Just see Omega power as percentage. 100 Omega power means 100%, 650 times 100% is 650, 650 times 200% is 1,300. If Omega power is 200, right? So that's how that works. That's how Omega power works. That's why I always read these descriptions. Some Illuviates literally have nothing in here that works with Omega power. So Omega power is a useless stat for those Illuviates. For example, uh, Kara Blue is one of them, t is one of them. They have nothing with Omega Power. Then, outside of that, levels also give Illuvials a modifier. I think I've mentioned this in previous videos, but essentially one level gives you plus 1% on health, on attack damage, on resistance, and on Omega Power. So those four out of the six stats are affected by level modifiers, and attack speed and movement speed aren't. What does this mean? So, for example, for a auto attack damage based Illuvial, if it has plus 50% attack speed modifier, simply said, it does 50% more damage. If it has plus 50% attack damage modifier, well, assuming it is level 60, which for Leviathan and purposes Illuvials will likely be, uh, it already is at 160% attack damage based on the level. So the modifier out of the stats makes us go from 160 to 210 which is only roughly a 33% damage increase, not a 50% damage increase. So something like a 30% attack speed buff on a level 60 Illuvia that deals damage of auto attacks, like most fighters and rogues in the game, uh, simply speaking, is as good as having 50% attack damage modifier. Attack speed modifier, incredibly strong on most Illuvias, to be honest. Now, the second part why attack speed modifier is uh, so, so strong is because the way that energy gain in Illuvium works, like the mana of the creature, so to say, right? But it's called energy. Is that uh, every every one every single Illuvium gets the same amount of energy per second? If they attack very slow, then they get more per auto attack. If they attack very fast, they get less per auto attack. Now I don't know if this is a bug or if this is intended or not, or if the, the game dev team didn't even thought about this or if they did not. I don't really know, but the attack speed modifier, because it is just bonus attack speed, basically makes your Luvia cast faster because you attack faster and attacking faster gives you more energy, right? So that is really, really good for Psyon and Luvids as well, for Empath and Luvids, for like anyone who is auto attacking, for tanks as well. The crazy part about tanks is if I have a Titan or my opponent have a Titan or and they are just sitting in front of each other and attacking each other and they're tanking our teams, the one with more attack speed might cast the ability like split second earlier and then that ability cast might cancel the other Titan or's cast. 
Like it really might just hit that timing where you stun the Titan or mid animation and then you have the big stun and the enemy team literally doesn't have that. So if you play Leviathan Arena especially, attack speed is likely a really relevant stat on probably every single Alluvia that is auto-attacking and that wants to cast their ability frequently or wants to deal damage with auto-attacks basically. So you should value attack speed tremendously highly. There's no diminishing return like on the other stats with levels, period. And in case you guys didn't know, and I, again, I don't know if this is really intended by the devs, because I think it, it's kind of crazy that it works like this, but you cast your abilities faster. That makes attack speed, for example, also really good on a ramp fire, because, well, ramp fire works with the ability, and you want to cast a lot of abilities, right? And then the other interesting thing, especially on something like a ramp fire, where it really is about casting the abilities, alluvials take damage, they gain energy. And they gain energy based on the unmitigated amount of damage that they would get. Uh, how do you mitigate damage, resistances, grit, and resolve? So in Leviathan, or also in overworld combat fights in general, right? If your alluvials, your ramp fire doesn't have these like, I don't know, tiny 1800 health, but with level 60 and a 50% modifier, it has almost 4000 health. And it's also going to have a lot of extra resistances, right? It's not going to have like the 50% at uh, 50 resistance. It's going to have like maybe 110 if it's 50, uh, 50 resistance bonus from modifier and 60 from level, right? So then the ramp fire is going to have pretty secured ability cast, right? Because it is so tanky, has a lot of health, a lot of resistances, unless it's just stun locked down, which is pretty unlikely, it's always going to be able to go to the sky and cast the ability and deal a lot of damage. So in an alluvial like Ramfire, it is a bit hard to say, like, do you really need the extra little bit of Omega Power damage from the stat modifiers? Or is even something like health and resistance more relevant because then you have secured one or maybe even secured two abilities before anything can take it down, right? So this is kind of the, the tricky thing to know about the PvP things and so on sometimes. It's not always as easy as, oh, this is a Psyon Alluvia, so Mega Power is the best stat. Very likely that attack speed could be the best stat if it is about casting frequently and not having one cast that just kills the entire enemy team. Usually casting frequently is better because Psyon kind of means something like Invoker and whenever they cast, the next cast becomes stronger and so on. So on Invoker Alluvia, for example, attack speed very, very strong. On something like uh, Flish or Cane Lynxes, well, they tend to just either kill the entire enemy team with their first cast or you lose the fight anyways. So on those, for example, Omega Power would be better, like those like baseline Psyon guys, but on Invokers especially, attack speed very, very strong. Then yeah, like I guess the obvious things, uh, health and resistance, very, very strong on any kind of frontline and tank alluvial. And don't underestimate attack damage on a couple of the tanks as well, because some of them, like Seal, have abilities that you can also read. And then you see, oh, the ability does attack damage of my alluvial damage. And some of the tanks are very oriented around dealing damage. Hexodon, for example, has an ability that scales with health and with Omega Power. So this, for example, is uh, my Hexodon, actually. I, I really, really like this boy. Uh, well, doesn't have perfect attack speed stats, but max health, max omega power, and max resistance. So that is really, really strong. Now, why is this so strong on, for example, Axon? Like I said, always read the description of the ability. Ability is a shield that is a percentage of the max health plus a flat number times omega power. And when the shield ends, you deal max health plus a flat number times omega power energy damage in a small area. So because Axon scales with HP, HP is a stat that you get crazy amounts via levels and via modifiers. So Axodon benefits an insane amount of essentially the Leviathan game mode or of overworld in general. For example, I'm currently playing Crimson Waste a lot because I need to find Ramfight and Goliath for my milestones. I do want to complete those capture milestones as well. And Axodon is pretty much just the addition to my Rogue Predator Revenant team. Uh, currently, I'm just mainly playing the two Predator Alluvials, the two Revenant Alluvials, the two Dust Alluvials, and I just swapped out the other two guys for an Exodon and they dash, uh, dash to just have, have a Water Alluvial in there. You can also, I think, if you want to have the easiest fights ever, uh, just <clears throat> play Gyro instead of Revel and play Umbra instead of Dash. And then no fight in Crimson Ways is ever going to be a trouble for you. Super, super free and easy. But coming back at the Exodon and the abilities, essentially, this... This is just the thing to look out for and to read and to check all the time. 
Just read the description of the ability, see what stats are mentioned here. Is attack damage mentioned? Is HP mentioned? Is Omega power mentioned? And those tend to be pretty relevant. Is the Alluvial a Bulwark Alluvial? Tends to be like the tank frontline kind of guy. HP and resistance really, really strong. I would say HP is probably slightly better than resistance because they have so much resistance buffs from the Bulwark trade in general. There's like an indirect way of a diminishing return on just getting more and more and more resistances. Like the first 100 resistance that you have have more impact than the next 100 resistance that you have. Essentially, Let's not dive too deep into math, right? But assume you have a thousand health on your alluvial and 100 resistance. The other guy has to deal 2000 damage to kill your alluvial because 100 resistance are 50% damage reduction. They give you one effective, one set of effective HP of your base health. If you have 200 resistance, that gives you two times the effective HP of your base health. So the other guy would need to deal 3000 damage. So the first 100 resistance pretty much made your Inuvial 100% more tanky instead of needing 1000 damage to be killed, the other guy needs 2000 damage, but going from 2 to 3000 with the next set of resistances uh, is only a 50% increase, right? 2 to 3000. So Bulwark Inuvials tend to have a lot of resistance bonuses, that's why uh, HP really really good stat there. So rogues also interesting because uh, crit chance and crit amp, they, they don't scale with anything, with None of these stats or levels or anything like that. Attack speed, again, incredibly strong on the rogues, on the auto attack, demoning damage classes. I just want to really reiterate on that. Attack speed is super, super powerful. And I was honestly debating a little bit with myself. Am I going to tell everybody the secret on how strong the attack speed modifier is? But uh, I trust you guys that you use the Viper referral code and you make it uh, worth it for me. And I didn't just grief my own Leviathan teams to the ground. Yeah, I appreciate that. Now, sometimes also affinities and classes of alluvials, always make sure to read those. What does this alluvial uh, do? For example, Templar, right? Uh, Fernite and Blazonite and also the Red Panda line. Templar triggers every X auto attacks and it does something positive every X auto attacks. Attack speed is amazing for that. Right. Same way that I mentioned it for Invokers earlier, Invokers triggers every time you cast an ability, something positive happens, attacking faster. Again, I'm not sure if this is ever going to be changed because I think it's really OP, but again, attacking faster, casting ability, really, really strong with that ability that like, gets stronger every time you cast it and so on and so on, especially. So yeah, those are the most relevant things on the stats and that you should be looking out for. Uh, when it comes to Leviathan and my prediction for Leviathan stuff in the future, if you want to be rank one in Leviathan arena, you probably need most of your alluvials to have a 50% on literally everything. Like there's just going to be some really, really good player that is going to have those alluvials, maybe, maybe borrowed by some whale, maybe just going to have it by themselves, maybe grinded crazy amounts of hours in the overworld for it. I probably am intending to do that. I'll, I'll definitely be playing a lot of overworld and slowly getting my Leviathan collection ready. So yeah, if you want to be like rank one, that's probably what you need. If you don't really want to be rank one, you want to be, I don't know, top 50, top 100, diamond equivalent of other games and such maybe. Attack speed again on the rogues, the fighters, probably on a lot of the Psyne, like Invoker-ish Alluvials as well, right? On some empaths that really just want to cast their abilities quickly and so on. Attack speed, the main thing, right? probably really want that to be 50% on your relevant units in the team, like your main damage dealer or something like that. If you play an Arcanite team, you probably really want your two Arcanite units to have the 50% attack speed buff, and then maybe a little bit of attack damage and a little bit of Omega power. Like those probably don't need to be maxed out because it's not super likely that the fight is just going to come down to, is your guy going to deal 5% more damage or 10% more damage? Because instead of a 20, you have a 30% modifier here. It's probably going to come down to positioning or a lot of other stuff that's going to happen in the game. And maybe at the like super, super pinnacle, where everybody makes every single move literally perfect. And there's like very small differences in players and decision making. Yes, that's when the 5% stats and so on might matter. And it's a big might matter as well again. Because... The game needs to be set up for that, right? Like currently, the arena games are a bit more polarizing, right? Where it's just like you hit your units or you counter the enemy team with hyper or you counter the enemy team with positioning, yes or no. So that unless 
even if the other guy has like everything 50 and you have everything like 30 to 40, it will be fine for you. You you will win if you have the better positioning or if you get hyper and so on. All of those things matter more than these stats, even in Leviathan. But again, game is balanced and high agency in the future, assumingly, then the rank one guy probably really wants to have everything maxed. But if you don't want to be rank one, there are not going to be that many Illuvids even that have everything maxed. So just a high skill level, being really, really good at the game and just having something that's fine, like... Like I said, like 50% attack spin and the other stuff isn't bad. It's probably going to cut it for most of the Illuviates. Or for your tanks, it's like 40% HP, 30% resistance. Could be better, sure. Is it going to win or lose you most of the fights? Probably not. It's going to make a difference sometimes, not all the time. All right. I think that is, uh, that is what I wanted to explain to you guys today. Essentially, just again, please use the referral code VIPER. If you want me to keep continuing doing the videos and the streaming and all of that, because yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm probably going to reduce my time in Illuvium a little bit, but I don't know how much because no council member anymore. And therefore, yeah, I get hit on the business side of things, essentially. I appreciate everybody who, who voted for me, by the way. Uh, big, big shout out and thank you for that. Uh, we tried. I don't know, maybe next time. I don't even know if I want to run for it again, because the job has some uh, really stressful things next to it as well. So I appreciate everybody hanging out again and hope the video was helpful. See you guys in the next one.